So we're going to look at a good amount of, of different things. Uh, blocking, blocking in space, angle blocking, different routes, different. There's a, there's a lot. Uh, tight ends are involved um, in many different ways. And this is why some guys could struggle. Uh, it's, and, you know, right off the uh, jump. And this is why some tight ends or a lot of tight ends, to be completely honest, really take a good two, three, four years to really kind of find themselves. And, and you see a lot of tight end breakout age at like, you know, late twenties. Um, not always, but it, it does happen quite a bit. Um, because, you know, to be pretty simple, um, you're learning both to be a receiver and you're learning both to be an offensive lineman, you know, at the, at the same time, there's a lot to do. There's a lot to learn. Um, not only from the mental aspect, but from the, from the physical aspect too, you know, one play you have to, you have to outrun a, a linebacker one time you have to you know, jump ball with a safety. And then the next time you're trying to, you know, you're trying to kick out a freaking the end or, you know, be the lead blocker and block a linebacker in space. There's so many different situations these guys are put in. It takes a really long time for them to develop. Um, and, and the positive about the jets getting Rucker where they did and just their situation this year is he's, he's 10 and three, you know, um, any other year other than this year for the Jets, he's pretty much tight end, tight end one right off the jump. There's only a couple of tight ends I can think of in, in, in recent years. He'd be below, you know, Safarian Jenkins, crickets, <laughs> you know, like it's just so he's put in a good situation with the Jets. So um, hand check climb. Let's watch Rucker. I'll point him out. I'm um, good amount of time, but obviously number 88. Um, right now, Yaboa has it, and maybe Cager has it too. At the same time, I'm hoping I would like him to be 88 with the Jets, but right now he's 89. But for this review, obviously he's going to be 88. So let's watch him here. I'm gonna do my best job to show the play and then talk about the play. Sometimes I get a little bit ahead of myself, but I start going through it right away. So let's see, Rucker. Um, now hand hand check, and the thing, um. Actually, right off, right off the, right off the jump, uh, and this play looks a little bit laggy. I'm sorry, I don't know why the quality is a little bit sketchy in this play. It looks, it looks to be um, slow, but I don't, I don't think they're truly reading the, the, the end, uh, the end here. They, they could be. It wouldn't make necessarily the most sense if they're reading the email right here to, to hand check him to kind of delay the read for the quarterback for him to climb up. Um, so I'm not, you know, it could be a true read. I don't, if it, if it were to be a true uh, zone read, I don't love the design of him checking. You want to just bypass that gap to the second level as quick as you can to really define that read. But nonetheless, if they are, um, or even if they're not, Rucker does a good job climbing, staying square to the line of scrimmage, staying square to, to allow him to um, climb and get up past the, the first level to the second level defender because he doesn't want to overcommit to this and not be able to climb up, climb up and have to shuffle. He wants to be able to outrun him. Um, and kind of cut the the safety off where he's going, not to not to where he is now. So he doesn't want to get square and climb. So um, he wants to stay square to the line of scrimmage and then and then climb to cut him off. So again, good job with the hand check right there, just to make sure he's in he's uh, just to hold up the D end enough to allow the running back to hit that backside B gap, um, and then again climb square to where the the safety is going. Gets hands on, just hands on enough again to slow him down. Uh, yes, does two eight have to again kind of lighten the, the load on that on that near leg and pull away? Sure, but Ruckert on the you know very first block we're seeing is doing a really good job climbing square, um, keeping his eyes to the second level again. And I cannot wait to get a computer that I could show this and draw little arrows. You know, his eyes are to the second level, which is which is great. Not distracted by that first level again. Just get just get enough of a guy, and that's a lot of like what certain zone plays are, you know, um, getting to that positional leverage and getting just enough of a guy to allow your running back to, to squirt through a gap. And, um, he does a good job there, um, doing so. So let's get, uh, this is the part where I'm going to organize. This is the part where I need to organize. Okay. Block. Um, and again, there's me, some people who are going to be a uh, little bit crazy about, Oh, I don't want to see blocks. Well, you're, you're watching tight end films to so get over it. <laughs> That's what it's going to be. Uh, this one has a fancy arrow. The fancy arrows usually mean I put it on Twitter. So let's see uh, what Rucker does here. Obviously, it's going to be a block. He's much so, and, and you're going to see we're going to see this throughout the review. He's much more competent of a blocker where he's splitting or leading to like the second level, whereas he's not as comfortable like angle or drive block a blocking guy like solo in space. He's a better blocker than again, in, in, in tighter condensed uh, spaces. 
Um, in terms of like, again, angle box, drive box. Now we're talking about some combos, you know, some tags, you know, whatever, um, some, some trays. Okay. Now we might be talking a little bit differently, but situationally, uh, he's, he's a better blocker in some other situations than not. So here they're just running, obviously they have that, that, that fake, uh, jet motion right there, that late jet motion, just to hopefully pull the eyes handoff. Jeremy Ruckert's going to, to, to split block. He's in the sift underneath of the, of the, um, of the defensive line and basically kick out on the, anything on the, on the backside, just allowing that person to not track down the running back from behind. So, um, he's sifting. That's what I call it. That's what many people call it. Um, so sifts underneath. Again, you want to, and you want to take tight angles. A lot of, a lot of guys when they are sifting and this is a, this is just a product of doing it and, and knowing and being coached well, a lot of guys won't keep really tight angles to the, to the offensive lineman. What happens a lot, like they'll, they'll kind of scoop it out and they'll go really, really um, look, they'll kind of like, again, they'll, they'll, go, they'll have too much depth basically. Um, they'll have too much depth and then you'll see the E-mall, whether that be, you know, at, at that, at that time, a linebacker, a safety, a D end, it doesn't matter. They'll come high and get around it. So it's really important to stay pretty tight to the, to the line scrimmage. Um, to your offensive lineman because that's the most direct angle he's going to take to your running back. If 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 he's if you're going to stay tight to the line of scrimmage and he's going to he's going to um, push up the arc and then try to chase him down, it's going to be too long. Um, again, we'd be clutch to have some arrows. But good job of him staying tight right here. Stays tight, identifies his threat obviously, and then tries to he, you know drops his shoulder um, into him, obviously throwing him on his ass. So. We see the willingness. We see tight angles. Um, we see him obviously adjusting at the, at the very last second, right, right here to get vertical. Puts his head in there again, face it, face into the into the fan there, shoulder down, truck him. So hell of a job, obviously trucking the backs right there. Um, not too much to it, but it's something that we'd we'd like to see if he's going to be involved in this scheme with the Jets. And obviously, too, he did the effort right there after too. Just doesn't, doesn't just stay on the ground. So um, nice block by Rucker. Two blocks, hold vert break. Now we're getting to some some route running as well. Obviously, it's not going to be all blocking. It's going to be uh, I don't know. Let's let's call it thirty percent blocking. This this review, um, right here, he's Y ISO. I'm um, split out um, on the backside um, of the of the trip set to the top. So let's see him. Yeah. So, um, in terms of like the route running and stuff and, and the thing with Ruckert and we knew this when we drafted him and we heard, okay, he's gonna be a better pro than a, than a college player, which you, you'd hope that all your rookies are. Um, but with him specifically, you know, he wasn't really necessarily the first or second or third or even fourth read in his offense, you know, this, this offense, which I, I get if you're, if you're a dominant tight end in college, which you don't really see too much of, you see, you know, the Kyle Pitts is of the world. Um, OJ Havard, when he was at Bama was targeted a lot, but like typically, these guys aren't the focal point of their offense. And especially with an offense that that's, that's featuring, you know, Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave and, uh, uh, Nigba or Jackson Smith, whatever, whatever his, I, I don't know how to, I don't know if it's like a Nigba, I forget exactly how to say it, but he's really, really good too. Um, you also have the, the running back. I'm not sure what his name is 32, but he's, he's pretty solid. So, um, but let's watch Rucker on the, uh, run the out route versus the, uh, cornerback right here cornerback safety, whatever it is. Um, but it was a good job in terms of, in terms of the getting off the ball and not just flowing. You'll see, you'll see a lot of guys on this with their stem. They'll get, they'll kind of tipped off early and he'll start and he'll start to push this a little bit wide. If you're following my, my, my cursor, he'll, he'll, he'll start to stem a little bit wide and that'll take the DB to the break. And then um, he'll be, he'll be on that break because he's that he's stemming in too far outside. Um, he does a good job initially getting to, you know, racing to the outside shoulder. Why? Because he still needs to be at least squared up to, to uh, ideally outside of him when he's going to break, because he doesn't want to break inside of him and have to work past his hips and allow him to speed turn or, or just flip his hips, get a hand on, et cetera. So he has to stem to the outside to a certain extent, um, which, which he does. And then um, you're just, you're seeing him kind of head nod a little bit right here. He goes one outside, gets vertical again, foot the ground. It's it's very very subtle here with the route running, but you can you can see him nod. 
and then break. Um, and, he, and he nods and then gets vertical with that one step to, to press him. Because at this point, okay, maybe, maybe he's going outside. But he takes another step vertical, and that's kind of selling the DB outside, vertical, outside again. It just throws off the timing. So it's very, very subtle right there. This back into him. And now break, break, drive, line. And he does a good job staying over it. Like it, it, in terms of him not breaking down, him reaching a little bit for that, or not really reaching for it. It's actually, it's actually a pretty good break. Um, but for him to be running, no, rel- almost almost full speed. I don't think he's, he's not he's not kicking into high gear here. But he does a good job again, getting over that toe, getting that drive step underneath of his frame, and then getting over top of it. You know, again, a lot of guys you'll see this this drive step really um, get too vertical, then they have they have trouble getting their hips over the top, and they and they and they really um, round that break out. But he does a good job with that speed cut getting to the outside. Now, again, he wasn't targeted, but with a guy who was not targeted a lot, we're going to watch some plays where, where he doesn't get the ball or he doesn't even get looked at. Um, but we're looking at the route running. That's the most important thing um, of him. and Or not the most important thing, but uh, Rucker physical and route chicken wing. So again, another set right here um, where he's on the backside of Y ISO and, um, or Y flex ISO, I guess Y ISO would be different. Uh, if that would be, if he's attached to Y flex ISO, that's my, that's my apologies. So, um, Bottom of the screen, let's see. So he's just running a stop route. Um, yeah, we want to call it a stop route. And all we're noting is the physicality. It's, it's again, nothing crazy. There are, there are some plays that, that take two minutes to break down. There are some plays that take only, only 15 seconds. And this is, this is one of those where he's just getting to a spot and it's not like he has an option route where, okay, he, you know, he, he's going to be, if, if he's playing over the top, you could break it shorter. If he's playing outside leverage, you could break it inside. If he's playing inside leverage, you break it outside. Like there's plenty of offenses like that. Jets offense is one of them. Um, here, he's just running to, to a spot to sit it down. And the DB does a, does a good job staying patient with his feet. Again, the, the, the benefit of playing a tight end as a DB is if you are, are athletic enough, you can kind of sit on stuff. Um, and he gets this route sit on. And he doesn't want to just break into him and not, you know, not allow him not not open up any any grass for his quarterback to throw into a window if he were to be targeting him. Which Rucker doesn't know if he's getting if he's getting targeted or now. But I like the fact that he's getting physical in his route. You're seeing him um, use this call it a throw by chicken wing. It's more of a it's more of a throw by. Actually, almost works like it's like a hump. Look, I, don't, I can't tell if his left arm scoops underneath of the of the. Um, of the armpit, which would be like a true hump move, or if he kind of just gets a hand on, but you like to see nonetheless, whether it be a push by a chicken wing um, or like a hump move, um, which is basically just a throw by. And you like to see that physicality in the route. So right here, let's say he were to be targeted. If he had to be targeted here, is he open? Is, did he open up a window for himself to be targeted? Again, minus everything else, minus doesn't matter, safety, corner, you know, linebackers, this, this curl the flat or man coverage, whatever he is, doesn't matter. I can tell you right now that the physicality in this route opened himself up to be open. So good job pairing that, that, th- that, 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 um, that throw by that, that, that push off with the stop. It's, it's really good. Yeah. And simple, easy, but good. Get vertical out of the break. Hope you, you hope that he'd open up his hips a little bit and you get some room underneath, but if he sits on it, get physical, you know, that's the thing. Like if it, while, while, the DB has the benefit of maybe sitting on some more stuff because he's not as athletic. He's not going to burn right by him. The thing with tight ends, who know how to use their physicality. Now, if you're letting that guy build up his speed and build and, and build up his momentum, and you're going to try to sit on the top of his route. Well, guess what? That doesn't be a physical route break. And, that, and that's what you need. And that's why guys like, and again, I'm not comparing him literally at all to Gronkowski because he's not the same player at all, but that's what people struggle with. Like with Gronkowski, a lot of people were like, okay, I'm going to play off of me so big. And the problem was you let Gronk build up that speed and, and, and you let him have that momentum into that break, have fun, have fun staying on him, staying on his hip in that break. So um, a lot of people didn't press him, which they should have, because you don't let that guy build up his speed. And that's kind of the situation we see there. You don't want to let guys necessarily build up their speed um, and try to match that, fat, that, that break with physicality. If you're going to play off, you got to match that break with athleticism. You, you can't necessarily just try to work, you know, get into his hip or, or, uh, or kind of like stack the breaks. So, uh, Ruck shoulder uh, slips route break. Okay, so we're gonna see him right here in the slot um, to the uh, field. So let's watch him.
Um, so little things, again, it's, it's very little things and we're going to have to pull.